First of all, when you look at growth in Europe, I want to come back to the kind of, you know, uh, the normalization of monetary policy, but do you think European growth has peaked? European growth remains strong. It was especially strong last year with 2.5% and with an acceleration in Q4. And we had some kind probably of setback in Q1 with 0.4%. Uh, but we think this is mainly due to temporary factors. We will look precisely at the data which will be published in, in the coming weeks. We just published for the French economy our first preliminary estimate at 0.3% for Q2, but economic orders remains positively oriented and we do not see at this stage a trend change. I mean, okay, uh, let, let, let me stress You're one thing. You're expecting it higher. Uh, the trajectory is kind of on our, the Our forecast well. for the URA economy this year is 2.4% uh -huh. published last March. So we'll see how it will be in June. But it's not an acceleration compared to last year. It remains at a very solid level with a broad-based broad -based growth. Um, Governor, you were at pains in saying at your speech that actually once the normalization process starts in terms of asset purchases, you won't be too quick or too, I guess, late in, in actually raising interest rates. How important is it that the market understand this correctly? Uh, First, we will have to decide about the end of the net asset purchases. As soon as SAPI, sustained adjusted path of inflation, is fulfilled. And as I already said, whether it will end in September or in December is not a deep existential question. And then we were very clear about the sequencing. We said that the first rate hike would come well past, I quote, the end of this net asset purchases. Uh, and uh, what I explained is that we will give probably additional guidance before the end of the, of the year about the timing of this first rate hike and about its contingency. Let me explain that. About the timing, well past, meaning at least some quarters, but not years. And about the contingency, it will be contingent also on the inflation outlook. Then we will see exactly how we formulate it. We are predictable, and it's a clear virtue of our gradual normalization path, but we are not pre-committed because we look at data and the economic situation as it is and as it will be. But, Governor, when you say some quarters, could, could we assume that's six months from, from that asset purchase kind of normalization, or could it be nine months? English is not my native language, but I understand <laughs> that some can mean several figures. Okay, so it can be up to three or even four. I will not comment more. Okay, Governor, when you look at the, the, the mm. main concerns or the main challenges for the ECB right now, mm. is it communication to the markets? Uh, I am, don't think we have specific concerns. We have clearly a mandate, which is price stability. And coming back in a mid-term perspective to a 2% inflation close to but below 2% uh, as the inflation target. So we are making progress towards this target. Despite some transient effects, inflation is at present rather low uh, in the Eurozone with 1.2% for the first estimate for April. But we think that inflation will resume its progress in the Eurozone in the coming months, and these are clearly temporary effects. So, uh, we are clearly focused on delivering our mandate on price stability. And we have been efficient because two years ago there was still deflation risk in the euro area. Last year we were at 1.5% and we expect inflation in 2020 to be at 1.7%. How much does a higher price of oil help in reaching your, your inflation target? Again, it's a mid-term objective, and this is very important. We look through transient phenomena, and energy prices are very often transient phenomena. If you look at recent months, uh, base effects on oil price play down on inflation. It could play up in the coming months due to the recent phenomenon you described, but it's our role to look through effects which would be transient.